Want to get all dolled up like an authentic 1930s dame, but don't have the right eyeshadow? Well, keep watching and I will show you how to make your own 1930s style cream eyeshadow. Making your own makeup is actually surprisingly simple. Most of these eyeshadows, not all of them, but most of them, I made myself in my makeup only coffee grinder. You just mix some powders together and a few oils and press it into a little eyeshadow pan. But when it came to 1930s eyeshadow, I wanted something that was as authentic as possible. I did a lot of research and unfortunately couldn't find any original 1930s eyeshadow recipes. Now, in all fairness, I probably wouldn't have followed an original recipe anyway because by the 1930s you're starting to see a lot more chemicals enter into makeup and it may have been something that was either not doable or something that I wouldn't feel comfortable putting on my eyelids. But in my research, I did discover at least that 1930s eyeshadow was a cream-based formula. That's why in a lot of old magazines and stuff, if they're talking about eyeshadow application, they're talking about applying it with the fingers. And you basically apply it with the finger, smooth it out, and then set it with a powder over top. So I designed this recipe to be as similar in concept to that as possible, if not exactly the same in terms of ingredients. Credit where credit's due. My eyeshadow base, the, the cream base that I used for the eyeshadow, was heavily inspired by a cream eyeshadow recipe over on the Soap Deli News blog. I did change it up a bit. It's not completely her recipe, but it's, it's pretty similar, so I just thought I'd mention that. I'm not, not trying to steal anyone's content. I just used it as a, as a base, so I will link her blog below uh, in case you're interested in hers. Hers is more of a modern, heavily pigmented... Uh, mica-based eyeshadow, whereas I went with more simple oxides and ultramarines as my mineral pigments and colored them very lightly. 1930s eyeshadow was actually not meant to be visible in the same way that modern eyeshadow is. I read a 1930s magazine article the other day that suggested the eyeshadow should A, match your eye color, and B, not be visible. You should blend it and it should appear natural. So you're going for a tint to the eyelids, but it should be a very subtle blush. It's definitely, it's definitely noticeable, like the difference between wearing it and not. But if you look at somebody wearing it, you would not think she's wearing eyeshadow right away. You'd have to look closely. Which if you look at old Hollywood stars, a lot of the time it's in black and white. But here, for example, she's applying eyeshadow. But you can't tell the difference between where the eyeshadow is and where it isn't. It's a very subtle blush of color. Sort of like when you're applying rouge to your cheeks, you don't want it to be obvious that you're wearing, you know, big red circles on your cheeks. You want to blend it so it looks natural. The same idea is being applied here to eyeshadow. One thing I should note before we jump right into the recipe is that when I was making the eyeshadows, I was trying a bunch of different color combinations. So I made four eyeshadows at one time. I would actually not recommend doing this. I've listed the, the ingredients as a per eyeshadow basis. If you want to make more than one color, I would suggest melting each individual color at a time and then mixing it into the pigments. I found that trying to do it all at once, the oil and, and the wax mixture started solidifying really quickly and it was really hard to mix everything in before it, it got too hard to work with. If this does happen when you're making your eyeshadow, you can just remelt it on the stove top. But it's a lot easier just to work one at a time to begin with, so you shouldn't have this problem. All right, so let's get started.
If you're going for an authentic 1930s eyeshadow, the colors that were usually available were brown and blue. You also see sometimes gray, green, purple, and I've even heard mention of metallic colors such as silver and gold, but they were talked of in a disparaging light in the article I was reading. I think those colors were probably meant for Hollywood stars and were considered garish for everyday wear. So not, not recommended for the everyday woman. So I guess it depends on what kind of look you're going for. Now, as I said before, I tried a number of different color combinations, but I actually found the most effective were either just a plain brown iron oxide or a plain ultramarine blue. These pigments can be bought usually places that sell soap making supplies or cosmetic companies online. I will, I will link a few below if you're not sure where to go, but they're, they're, quite inexpensive and a little bit goes a long way so probably not you're probably not going to be able to find these in store so I would recommend ordering online if you don't care about having a historically accurate eyeshadow you could of course use a different blend of mineral pigments or micas to come up with pretty much any color you can imagine micas are easily available again from anywhere that sells soap supplies or on things like Etsy or makeup supply companies just make sure it's cosmetic grade and safe for use around the eye After the eyeshadow has cooled for a few hours, it's ready to use. Apply it by picking up some of the product with your finger and gently smoothing it over the lid. To set the shadow and help prevent creasing, apply a setting powder or face powder over top. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial on how to make 1930s eyeshadow. If you want me to make more makeup products inspired by the past, leave me a comment below with any suggestions you might have, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! So before we jump right into the recipe and the musical montage, musical montage! Want to get all dolled up like a 1930s dame, but don't have a... Want to get all dolled up like a 1930s dame, but don't have the right eyeshadow? Stay tuned, and I will... That's not what I... <clears throat> Want to get all dolled up in a 1930s style, but don't have the right eyeshadow? <laughs> Want to get all dolled up in a 1930s style makeup look, but don't have the right eyeshadow? Well, keep watching, and I will show to... <laughs> this shouldn't be so difficult. <laughs> Wanna get all dolled up like a 1930s? I can't do the baby voice. <laughs> Ellen Kane, I am not. <laughs>